animator versus the machine. Begin. All right, we're back for another episode. So on this podcast, we typically talk to industry professionals, professors, artists, techno techno enthusiasts, and well, anyone else who will talk to me. But there's one group of people we haven't talked to yet. The group I would argue are most impacted by artificial intelligence in the animation industry because they're about to enter the field in the coming months. So I decided to reach out to the Algonquin Animation Program and they replied and said they would love to. So from the Algonquin Animation Program, we have two students who are about to graduate. We have Elise Van Heeren and Yamma Majabor. Did I get that right? No, I don't think I did. Close enough. Okay. <laughs> Yumna Okay, perfect. Hello, ladies. How's it going? It's pretty good. Yeah? No, it's nice day. Yeah? yeah? It's not too bad. <laughs> perfect. All right, so t- how about we start with Elise? Elise, tell the Phantom listeners a little bit about yourself. Uh, yeah, my name is Elise Van Heerden. I am a... Algonquin student I'm in the design section of the program so I've been really focusing on like layouts and really gotten into background painting um and yeah I've started the job hunt a little early in the hopes that maybe that will help me but I'm excited to graduate and get out there (laughs) perfect and you Yama who are you to these phantom listeners Hello, I'm also in the Algonquin College program, third year, and I'm in the 3D course kind of section, and I mostly do 3D modeling, and I do some animation on the side, but that's kind of like my specialty, and I'm still relaxed. I'm taking it slow on the job hunting. I know we're in a tough spot, so I'm like taking my time. We need to like work on my portfolio it's getting there perfect that's real so yeah uh what's what inspired you guys to be to pursue a career in animation let's start with yama uh yeah i mean i i always kind of grew up drawing and i have a like a deep love for everything cartoon and anime and whatnot so uh it was kind of like the obvious thing for me when I saw that it was an option I was like oh absolutely like like, this is what I want to do I want to make cartoons that other people will enjoy the way I did growing up so perfect yeah uh it's a a tale that's been told many times what about you Elise uh fairly similar like growing up being the art kid but I wasn't really interested in animation like right away um when I was really little I wanted to be an author And then I think in like middle school, I kind of realized that animation was like the marriage of art and story. And I remember watching How to Train Your Dragon 2 for like the 500th time and hitting the end credits and feeling like almost like sick with like, I need to do this. I don't know how, I don't know why, but right now I know I have to get good enough. Um, And then just kind of became obsessed with it and haven't thought about doing anything else. (laughs) Pure inspiration. Perfect. So then... It's no secret that you're on this podcast where we're going to talk about AI, so let's just get into it. When did you guys become aware of AI, you know, increasing presence, and how did you feel about its role in animation? Uh, Let's go with Elise. Um, I feel like it's been fairly recent that I've become aware with it, kind of like when it really exploded in the last, like, year or so. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think I've been a little protected by the Algonquin bubble of like, my head is to the grindstone and I can only think about the work I'm doing now and have no capacity to think about anything Whatever's the immediate present and that's, (laughs) there's nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. I've got the blinders on. (laughs) Um, And it's really only been this year where I'm like, oh, this actually does impact me and I need to think about other things that I've had to consider it. Mm -hmm. But it kind of feels like it's very out of my control. And that's as much thought as I've given it where I'm like, well, <laughs> I don't know. Well, let's fair. It is what it is. Sure. Yeah. Right, what about you, Yama? Being in 3D and all. Yeah. I mean, I started to get like into the AI conversation back when it like became a thing on TikTok with the whole like Ooh. filters and stuff. And I got to know that, oh, this is actually what they're doing with other people's art and stuff. And mm-hmm. but... I kind of really started to know more 
also this year now with like the new more developed stuff that's coming out and i don't know at first i was like oh my god like this is this is it we're all doomed yeah, i'm never okay. finding a job because yeah. we were like already halfway through our education and i was like well i've wasted all this time and money for this but now i'm in a more like a yeah, I'm I'm calming down. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm in a more like stable place where I'm like, yeah, it, it's it's scary, but it's still it's got a ways to go. And like, I know I'm not in that much of a tight squeeze yet. So, OK, so have you guys discussed the your concerns about AI with your peers at, in class or with faculty? And what are the collective thoughts yeah. around it? Oh, yeah. Like what? Yeah, I think uh, that was like one of, I don't know about Elise, but one of the first thing that we started talking about, like beginning of the year was like, oh, guys, AI, like this is, if we see you guys using this stuff, you're out. Oh, So that was like the first thing. Yeah. yeah and it was like, it's a big no-no in, in at least the 3D aspect of it. So, and I talk with my classmates all the time about it. And we've tried to ask like industry professionals, but like we're trying to see as much as we can how much how deep intertwined it is with the industry right now so but yeah for for at least my program it's like <laughs> yeah it's it's a big no-no yeah okay what about you Elise? absolutely yeah um i would say fairly similar except for it was a little bit more like we are not we are not going to talk about this we don't want to think about it we're all just going to focus on our work yeah. Um, and I'm a, I'm the class rep for my group. Yeah. So I got to go to an Algonquin, um, meeting where it was like all the class reps for all the programs, not just within like the arts. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was about AI coming into the college. And it was really interesting to have like the, the business students and the communication sure. students like stand up to the microphone and be like, we think it's great. And I love it writing my little paragraphs and then having like the art students being like, we hate it. And it's so like yeah, stealing our jobs. Yeah. And just like, <laughs> just burn it down to the yeah. ground. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. So I'm curious, Yama, uh, from a 3d point of view, what were they like, what were they like? You cannot use this at all. Like, I'm curious to like what integration they thought you would use it for. You know what I mean? Um, I, there's a lot of like softwares and plugins that you can add into Maya and stuff. Okay. So I'm assuming that that was, there's a lot of like auto keyers and auto stuff and betweeners and hmm. stuff like that. And they were like, you don't want to really do that. We want you to see, like, we want to see the effort and how you're thinking about doing this kind of stuff. Oh, okay. So that was mostly it. Cause we, I feel like there's not a lot of stuff that's affecting us as much mm -hmm. in the 3d right now so yeah. it was mostly like don't let like any computer generated stuff impact your work basically okay so it was, it was just more about not cheapening the craft and letting the computer do everything versus like no we want you to understand like timing and spacing and all these type of things yeah it's kind of like that it's like a mix of both of those things where it's like well, you need to understand what you're doing so you you have a good result and that like the computer generated stuff is never going to be able to do that for you so right so you're not in your job and you're like hey you guys don't have the rig ai tool here and uh, i don't know what to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> the auto modeling mm. tool <laughs> just like yeah. click it and it's a car yeah <laughs> no <laughs> yeah it's like the uh at least during my my time in the studio it was always like the infamous auto animate button that was it was always like the, the yep. mythical button where it's like, just do it now. And just like, you'd, you'd hit it and you're like, it's perfect. Great. Move on. But it's like, it doesn't exist. <laughs> right. If you just let Toon Boom do its thing. It's like, holy shit. That's fucking horrifying. It explodes every Yeah. And there's like parts so are like launching <laughs> across the room. And you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So I was curious. Um, do you guys have any plans to adapt to the changing world with AI? That might bring to the animation process and what concerns do you have with it being integrated into like an animation pipeline or you know the animation industry itself uh oh that's not good i hear crickets yeah i don't know maybe uh for us i don't think it like there's a lot of stuff that goes into 3D, like especially with animation and modeling, where it's like so detail oriented, mm -hmm. and the revisions that you get are like so like oh move this two pixels to the left. Right. So I don't think there's a lot of like I'm not as scared 
about my field right. of animation when it comes to AI. And I'm not really sure how. Like, I know that there's like the auto stuff and auto peers and auto in-betweeners and yep. stuff. And sure, they could probably like, they might be able to help us every now and then, but right. it's still not something that's going to take over our jobs. I feel like the, the more illustrative side of art is still the one that's most in this like space of like, oh, do we fear it or do we not fear it? Right. So. Like, yeah, there's the craft of, use like even in Toon Boom or even Maya, like you could auto tween, mm. right? But it's gonna look like shit. Yeah. But it's it's the craft of knowing like, no, no, I want like a three quarter space and then moving at the timeline and being like, no, this is where I want my my breakdown here. This is where I want like his arms to break the model. I want to go up. Versus like you you know, you're that's the craft of understanding the 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 kinetics and the movement as well as the artistry of what you want to do and the exaggeration of animation versus just like look at my bubbly guy move and you're like holy shit mm-hmm. so yeah, basically. yeah all right um i guess for elise who's in backgrounds or aspiring mm-hmm. to be in backgrounds <laughs> aspiring. Yes. Uh, are you concerned with because there was a netflix show i think it was made in china a couple months ago where they used uh, AI generated backgrounds, and then artists would draw over top of it, and then AI would dra- render it over top of, generate it over top again, right? So it's it's using, it's not its data set is not like where it's getting information is not from the internet, but it's it's getting from the artists who are being hired by a studio. Does that concern you? Like, is that a tool in your mind, or is that just is that just cheapening what mm-hmm. the craft is, in your opinion? In my opinion, I think it's cheapening the craft. I think that I have no plans of integrating it into my workflow until I'm forced to, (laughs) in which case I will adapt to keep a job. However, um, I think one of the things that like I've struggled with a little bit in this program Mm -hmm. is like kind of losing the or starting to lose the naivety. Is that what you would say? Yeah, there we go. Of coming into this industry and being like, it's about telling stories and sharing your art, and then kind of being like, no, it is like it is an industry that yeah. is a bought and sold product. And so I think the fear for me really comes from knowing that at the end of the day, if it saves people money, it will be used. And <laughs> the kind of fear of like somebody who came into this because I'm really passionate about storytelling and art and right. stuff. The idea of like a story bought by greed and made by robots instead of yeah the artists who want to, who are able and want to do yeah. it, uh, it's, is the fear. Yeah, it's that, <laughs> it's that sense of capitalism and consumerism taking over the artist, artistry of what animation is. And it's like, yeah. oh, I yeah. don't like this. <laughs> right? It, it, like, mm. like, I've seen it happen from past work experiences where it's just like, yeah, like, we're like, they're throwing animators at it. And it's like, yeah, we just got to get it done because we like, it's money and yeah. we need to pay the, for the keep the lights on. It's like, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's like it does hurt the the romance, right? It's like a western where it's like mm-hmm. everyone has an idea what a western is versus like what the reality of a western actually is, right? Where it's like it's harsh yeah. and it's cruel. And you're like, oh, okay, versus like you know, it's like cowboys, you know, like protecting the land, the frontiers, and you're like, mm, that's all yeah. bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, are there any? I guess with. How much have you guys seen of um, AI's evolution over the last, let's say, year that has made you go like, ah, it's fine. Like, it's just a, it's a fad. And then being like, or is there something like, like oh, we should maybe be concerned. Like, what what red flags to you seem concerning in your minds, if any? None? I mean, there is, yeah. I feel like for me, it's like the right now they're all talking about like open AI Sora. Mm. And that's like the big thing that's kind of taking over my Instagram feeds and everything. It's like, oh no. And when I look at it, I see like these gorgeous artworks that I'm like, right. they, they still lack a lot right. of like, especially the life and like that. There's this thing that animators bring into their work and it's like this joy of just working yeah. on it. And you can tell by like the end result. And I still don't see it in any of the work, especially like the illustrations. There's so many photos out there that are AI and I can just like look into their eyes and know that's right. not something that somebody made, you know? Yeah. 
So yeah, especially like now with the video stuff that's coming out, I, I can tell that it's it looks amazing, but it's still like missing. But some people will see that and be like, oh, that's enough. Oh yeah. Like, this is great. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's like, it's just gotten so and more like developed that it's like, oh no, some people will see this and be like, no, this is it. This is a product by itself. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's different because it's like, we see that it's missing that like soul, but like some of the people don't care about that they just want to sell it and have it merchandise right. so that's like my biggest like red flag right now it's like oh no it's starting to get to places where i'm like oh well like that's my it's not good that's my fear as well is like when i see this stuff i like i go like oh i can pick out like that's fake as shit like that's ai mm -hmm. like and then because it, it all has the same look where it's like you know like this the character's yeah. moving and everything in the background's <laughs> kind of blurry and like it looks it looks hyper realistic and like that's cool and everything yeah. but it like and like now like with like sora like it, it loses its like it can now hold a form properly so it's not like jittery and it's not like oh my eyes are like tracing everywhere and you're like holy shit what's going on there uh but like to me i'm like oh that looks crappy right it looks like there's no life to it it's just like it's just moving parts right it's just there's no soul to it but mm. my fear is to an average audience member who doesn't know animation doesn't know the principles doesn't know you know how to bring life to things or has an artistic eye they're gonna be like yeah i don't care like i don't know how many times i've seen it on reddit just going through the comments and people are like my girlfriend said this looked amazing they thought this was you know like jurassic park five and you're like okay you're like oh that's and that oh, that's the part that concerns me i'm like oh i don't like that feel where it's just like it's good enough yeah you're like mm. Mm -hmm. right or it's like Ooh, please. like i have a i have like i know someone who like posts things all the time they're like look at this movie it looks great i'm like this looks so fucking fake like there is no like <laughs> yeah. there is no halo 7 coming out with like Master Chief and some unicorn. I'm like, this is not what you're talking about. And you're like, you can tell it's fake, but they're like, I believe it. And you're like, oh, this is not good. Like, it's when you start realizing like not everyone has a critical eye. And you're like, oh no, and not a lot of people like they they don't see the this like massive production. Like they don't know the difference. Some people just don't want that. You right. know, they just want something to consume. So to them it doesn't make it really a difference if it looks like this or looks like that it's just something that they can sit and like watch or like if it's an artwork they can buy or stuff like that so that's the thing that's the most concerning to me I guess. yeah yeah jumping onto that i like i think that it really ties into the way that we're being like hardwired to just eat dopamine right now <laughs> just like yeah. the like constant <laughs> scrolling you don't really you aren't giving yourself the time to analyze it and i feel like that's a time a couple times where i've scared myself where i haven't caught it right away where i'm like looking being like man that's a nice illustration. The rendering's way better than mine. And then I look and I'm like, oh, wait, no, that's AI. And I didn't pick it up. And that's where I get like yeah. scared when it takes me a little too long to realize it. Because yeah. um, I'm like, no, I've been, I've spent a lot of time and money in this program trying to get better. And if I can't pick it up right away, oh, yeah. what is somebody who doesn't look at art all the time going to think? And, and I think that beyond just the like, the scariness of it progressing to a point where people like can be tricked into thinking it is the idea that people wouldn't care at all because there's no way that you can like shake artistic integrity and like a care for it into people as much as I wish you could. And that's a little scary to be like, some people aren't going to care at all well, and I can't make them. No. And that's the thing too. Like I understand from a student point of view, we're like, even now, like times are tough and they're like, we just need to mm. keep the lights on. And if it's like, if I can cut cuss, if I can cut cut costs, sorry, <laughs> and then um, you know keep the lights on with half the staff, you know, like that's a pretty alluring thing. And like, yeah, it's yeah. like as a a person in the industry, and like you know, or people who are about to be in the industry, that like that sucks because you're like, well, shit, that's another yeah. employer I can't, you know, I can't get a job now. But I understand from their point of view, it's like, no, like this, this is employing who I can employ now, right? Because like animation isn't cheap. Like it's super expensive and time consuming and labor intensive, right? So like, so I sent you guys a thing in the chat. I will post mm -hmm. it on the, the video and I'll edit it in. 
So this was recently sent to me by Weldon Pops from Algonquin College. Nice. Yes. So <laughs> we were just with him. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah. You can say hi. There. Yeah. Um, so this is Ch- this is China's first AI generated cartoon. And if I didn't tell you that, it looks like a shitty Toon Boom animation. And that's the scary thing. It's like if you if you're not critical and looking like you're like analyzing every scene, you'd be like, "Oh, this is just shitty Toon Boom." But it's like, no, everything's AI generated from the models, the backgrounds, to everything. That's like, oh. I saw a post about this on LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah. That's probably from Weldon. <laughs> yeah, yeah probably. might be. <laughs> yeah, he sent me, he's like, this is the end of times. I'm like, oh, shit. But, uh, so some people are concerned about it. Understandably. Um, mm. But, uh, how do you guys feel from just watching a couple clips of it? From watching it? Just a raw reaction. I'm just curious. Um, I mean, I wasn't looking so much at the animation. I was studying the yeah, backgrounds. Yeah, the background. And there was a couple where I was like, yeah, I can tell that that's AI and that doesn't look great. And yeah. It, some things don't make sense, background paint. But then there was one with the mountains where I paused it and was kind of looking at it for a hot minute and was like, mm, I wouldn't be able to tell on that yeah. one. Yeah, there's some where, yeah. I think it looks pretty good. There's some where you're like, you're like, oh yeah, that's clearly AI generated. And then like the mountains are the same yeah. for me. I was like, ooh, I... I is this done by an artist? And then I read the article and it was yeah. like, everything in here is AI generated 100%. I'm like, ooh, shit. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Yama? <laughs> yeah, no, like I was looking at the animated scenes and all of yeah. that and it's still- like, It's rough. It's it's yeah. it's rough. It's very rough, but it's scary how close it is. Yeah, like- Like this is, this is something that maybe I could have done in like right before I entered the program or like the first year. Yeah. And it, it took me learning throughout the program to be able to better myself. But like, it's getting really close and I'm like, right. not happy with it. So like, this yeah. is the thing I was talking about six months ago, where I was like, this is the thing with computers is like, everything is stepped learning where it's like, it doesn't know how to do it, it doesn't know how to do it, it doesn't know how to do it. And oh, I know how to do something. And then it's like, it retains that. Mm-hmm. It's not like a, a human where it's like, it's a gradual curve up, mm-hmm. right? Like we, we build upon knowledge, right? There, them is just like, Fail, 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 fail. Oh, succeed. And then it goes to the next level and you're like, oh, fuck. There's no, there's no regression. Like a human, you stop doing that thing, you regress a little bit, right? You lose a little bit of that skill. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, I've got to get back on the bike. You know, that's where that term comes from. And you're like, okay. So with viewing this cons- maybe mm-hmm. concerning video, um, <laughs> How do you see the role of artists and animation in the industry possibly evolving with the future where AI is more integrated into the industry? Like, do you see it as, you know, artists, like you said, at least maybe having to work with an AI model or an AI, you know, an AI tool? Or do you think the craft is unique enough and, and demands human intuition where there always be need of artists? What are your opinions on this, uh, at least from a from background point of view? Uh, from a background point of view. Yeah, yeah. from a background point of view. Um, I think it's hard to say. There's there's two wolves inside of me. All right, let's hear let's hear what these two wolves are howling about. <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one says that um, if they can save money, they will do it, and. Uh, my job is forfeit and that is the end of the story <laughs> and it's it would like to say it's the cynical mm-hmm. uh wolf and then the other one um would like to believe that uh on some level even the money making decision people understand that like even if it's just background art it's still like human connection and like putting something out into the world and having people respond to that. And that's important. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, uh, I have spent time and money in this program and I'm going to be trying to get into this industry regardless. And (laughs) what happens happens. Um, But yeah, I kind of sway between those two and go, I don't know. (laughs) Fair enough. I'm I'm bringing it along onto your guys' plates. Like I'm, 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 I've been researching it. So I'm like, here guys, here's this typhoon of information. <laughs> what about you, Yama? 
Yeah, I'm, I'm okay. kind of on the similar boat because, like, I also have those two wolves. Maybe they're, like, not wolves, though. They're, like, little scare chihuahuas <laughs> sometimes. But, um, <laughs> where I'm, like, the positive yeah. side of me is, like, no, we're in an industry that has these, like, the people that are in, in this industry are amazing. And a lot of these artists, like, they know the struggle of having to find jobs and wanting to put their passion in. So I'm, like, no, these people will know that you can't, like, replace the art that we're making. This is, like, too much. It's this precious thing that we've created. And But, like, the more realistic side of me is, like, no, these are greedy co corporations that are, like, they're the ones who want these products. So in the end, it, 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 enough with enough pushing, everything might, like, fall apart. Yeah. So I'm, like, just staying positive. And I know I have faith. I have faith in the people, yeah, that's what you so need, yeah. I'm hoping they won't let us down. But no. you never know. And I'm still like in a place where I'm. I know for me, I'm still comfortable with the, like the way it is right now. I know it's not going to take over for me. And even if like they try to incorporate more things, it's still not going to be enough. You still need animators. Mm -hmm. So like it's just about how fast it's growing. Right. And that's the the real concern. Right. It's it's growing at a rapid pace. Like you look at like eight months ago and you're like, oh, that's cute. Mm -hmm. Now you're like, it can do cartoons. Now you're like, oh shit, what the fuck? Yeah. It's like, it took me two years had to learn how to do that. Exactly. Like that's not fair. <laughs> yeah. And it took this thing six months. You're like, <laughs> yeah, right. So. I guess as we last thing I would like to say is what advice do you guys have for the next class about to enter the workforce maybe next year? Like what do you what do you advise them on a at a technology that's rapidly evolving and changing? And what advice would you give them to the to enter the workforce next year? If you could give some advice. Let's go with uh Yanma. Yeah, I feel like the the thing that we've heard the most throughout this year is chin up, because that's like the only thing that we can yeah. do. Yeah. But it it's kind of you. I come to the point where I'm like, no, this is like I have to do that. It's not like a choice. No. Yeah. It's it's an industry like even before AI, it we're in an industry that's always changing. Yeah. And you never know. You it, you can't really settle. No. So it's more about kind of going with the flow and following the tides wherever they go and never kind of beating yourself down too much because you never know when the next opportunity is going to open mm -hmm. really and the only thing you can really do is keep working on yourself and make sure that you're happy with the work that you're producing and you're kind of like you're confident enough to know that you you have a place in the industry for yourself so like when you do go and start applying you do, don't have to be that fearful chihuahua anymore you can be like a little bit more developed than that Perfect. but yeah it's just you know keep honing it's it's the more they're developing ai the more you can keep practicing and you might not be as fast but you're still growing and you're at a better pace right now so you might as well keep learning while you're at it. yeah what about you elise what is your sage advice to the the your your <laughs> underlings that are about to be 30 years eventually <laughs> um i agree with everything that uh you just said that was very good um, I think that the other thing would just be to like, with the idea of going with the flow, also keeping in mind that like your passion and the thing that led you into this is not a bad thing or something that might hold you back if you do end up having to work with AI. Like, yes, am I a bleeding hearted artist child who's running in with some big ideals into this industry? Yes. And if I have to work with AI, I'm going to still be like that. And I'll have to figure out how to balance my morals and getting money to live. Yeah. Um, but I don't think that it's like a weakness to care and not just kind of accept things as they are. Because I don't think that the fight is over yet. I don't think that we've lost any kind of battle for jobs yet. <laughs> yeah. And I could be wrong about that. But I don't think that people are just willing to roll over and accept their fate. And so, you know, maybe go with the flow or maybe fight. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Whichever one presents better. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so as we finish this podcast, I want to thank you guys both for being part of this. And I think the message mm -hmm. from this is naivete is not a bad thing, but hope is awesome. And also all you can do is be hopeful for a brighter future. No matter how weird or strange or uncomfortable the future might turn out to be. So I want to thank you guys for talking to me today. Yeah, 
thank you for Ooh, having thank us. Hey, thanks for joining me. All right, thanks, guys. All right, there we go. Another one in the books. I want to thank our guests for contributing on the subject of AI and animation, and hopefully you get something out of it. Here's hoping the more conversations we have, the more clearer the future will become. And hopefully, the more we talk, the less we demystify AI and show the realities of it. But again, no one has a, no one has a crystal ball, so that can all change in a matter of seconds. But all we can do is hopefully shape the future that we want. Check in for our next episode. Until then, let's keep the conversation going. See you next time. Goodbye. Aborting transmission.